I want to present a schematic or a, a description of Nietzsche's development, develop, development of Nietzsche's thought, particularly on moral philosophy, and then how that influenced uh, Foucault, who considered himself to be a Nietzsche and, and thought of most of his philosophy as just being an extension of the philosophy that had been produced by Nietzsche. Um, so the first stage of Nietzsche was that he undermined our morality by demonstrating how contingent on culture it is and how contingent it is on time and place. Um, so that's just essentially cultural relativism. What Nietzsche talked about was um, how if you look at different moralities, if we investigate the morality, say, of the ancient Greeks and of the uh, Muslim world and of the Eastern world and the Native American world, there are far... Uh, there are many different moral standards, so one particular behavior can't be classed as good or bad because perhaps, say, killing your own child is considered to be morally reprehensible in in Europe at the time of Nietzsche's writing, but perhaps at that time you could go somewhere else in the world and find a culture where killing your own child is actually acceptable under certain circumstances. So, uh, What Nietzsche concluded there was that there isn't any stable objective morality that can be got at by philosophizing, which is the opposite of what someone like, say, Kant thought. Kant thought that uh, you could essentially approach moral matters with philosophy. You could prove what is morally correct. Uh, mor morality is actually uh, subservient to logic in Kant's system. So anyhow, the result of that um, cultural relativism that Nietzsche stumbled upon in his investigations of morality is that he fell into nihilism because he realized that each of his values, the ones that, by which he led his life, were in fact also nothing but social constructions, social conventions, as he had recognized to be the case of morality. And it was nihilism which Nietzsche launched his entire philosophical project against. He started off his literary career with his first prominent work called The Birth of Tragedy. And effectively what that is, is he looks to the Greeks to find their solution to the problem of nihilism. And their solution was to essentially affirm life in the face of tragedy, uh, not by <clears throat> uh, trying to get out of tragedy, but by recognizing that tragedy is, is inspiring, the power of pain essentially generates action and movement and behavior and energy and life force. But uh, to simply reduce morality to aesthetics does have its flaws because we need to live a life of meaning. We cry out desperately looking for something upon which to latch our hooks uh, into the world and, and an aesthetic mode of living simply isn't isn't something which is going to tide us over. There's such an enormous gap which we must cross and aesthetics won't get us there. So the way he broke out of his nihilism was by answering the question, why have values in the first place if they're just conventions? So his answer to that question was that every action and every value stems from one root, the will to power. So what I mean by that is the question of why we have values in the first place, if they're just conventions, what he's saying there is, okay, well, we have these conventional moralities. What my, my culture have, has this moral framework and this other culture has another moral framework, but why, why do we bother making these moral frameworks in the first place? Because at first, we would assume that the reason each culture has its own moral frameworks is because they're each attempting to get to the bottom of what is morally true. They're trying to create moral systems that reflect the reality of moral reality. So there is an actual way of doing things which is correct. Uh, but since Nietzsche has realized, and this is investigations of morality, that that's not possible, it's not possible to prove any moral thing true, uh, he then has to ask that question, why do we have those conventions in the first place? And what he finds is that underneath all of our motivations is this life force. Uh, I think that Nietzsche's will to power is very similar to Bergson's Elan Vital. Uh, it's, a, it's a life energy. It's, um, I think the best way to conceptualize it, at least in the way that I understand it, is the energy that children have to be good at things. 
and you're a child and you see a bike you just desperately need to know how to ride it you're just driven towards growth it's, it's a relentless development the hooks of the child's mind just attach themselves to the world and draw it in and pull themselves toward the world um, and Nietzsche thought that that was underlying all of our all of our moral system so the point I want to conclude on with Nietzsche's thought there is just that he went through this period of nihilism but he recognized that the way out of the nihilism was to find that at the root of human existence it is this will to power but that's sort of one of the first things that we it probably not. it's the first thing that we experience Descartes had his I think therefore I am Schopenhauer had his I will therefore I am Nietzsche didn't bother with the I will he sort of just said will exists willing is the fundamental ingredient of reality so now let's move on to Foucault and he he took Nietzsche's notion of power as a basic driving force so Foucault saw that Nietzsche had identified that underlying all of these ambiguous questions, particularly of morality, but also of metaphysics and epistemology, they ultimately come down to a moral uh, imperative, and the entire philosophy is always based around that moral imperative. So Nietzsche asked, um, when we read a philosopher, to ask what morality is he aiming at? And Foucault took that attitude and he started to analyze society and institutions and history and knowledge, epistemology, um, using that framework. But his use of the term power is far more uh, material and constrained than Nietzsche's notion of power. He thought, Foucault that is, thought of power as a sense of domination over others and he neglected its other meanings of life, energy and health. So. I think yeah, the essential part of Nietzsche isn't that the overcoming of nihilism is accomplished by dominating others. That's not what it is. Nietzsche didn't suggest that we ought to just ruthlessly compete with each other for personal power in the, in the Foucauldian sense of power over others. Because that would be a zero-sum game. We ought to get to the top of the stack just so we can be there. And of course Nietzsche would find that as unmotivating as everyone in the modern world finds that, which is to say, why should I go after getting to the top of the stack if the stack is not a stack I want to be a part of? Nietzsche was more interested in creating competitions that seek the competition. The competition is to become brilliant, to become great. The, the accomplishment, the being at the top of the hierarchy isn't good because other people see you there. It's good because you've actually become competent and you get that sense of having satisfied your desire for growth in the same way that children feel that satisfaction when they learn to ride a bike or throw a ball or whatever it is that they want to accomplish, do a big jump perhaps. So uh, after reading power dynamics into every value he could find, Foucault determined that the only path forward was to continuously undermine the conventions established by power. Um, so that is that is an inversion of Nietzsche. So what Nietzsche did was he recognized that underneath all of our supposedly um, directional and morally driven institutions, there is actually just a, a will to power. So but Nietzsche said, okay, well, there's just this will to power underneath it. So now we see that these institutions have become decadent. What really is the problem is that they aren't being very effective expressions of the will to power. The, the will to power is actually confused and unable to express itself in the domain of these institutions which he's trying to criticize whereas for Foucault instead of uh, getting out of nihilism by understanding that beneath nihilism is a will and we have to simply get involved with this will we have to get involved with the life process the life energy Foucault took power as being purely external social power is what he thought of and so he, Foucault that is, he thought that the way to resolve um, conflict, the way to move forward beyond this issue as present, of nihilism as presented by Nietzsche, was, a, was to undermine the powerful, to see these powerful institutions and to undermine the conventions which allow them to maintain the power. Now, after having considered Nietzsche, 
to do such a thing seem to be entirely shallow. It seems to me that Foucault does not understand the purpose of Nietzsche. He describes himself as a Nietzschean, but the results of his efforts are always simply to undermine power, which is what I would consider to be the manifestation of raison de monde, which is, of course, sort of a stifled, eatable version of the will to power. Um, so Foucault, I think, is someone who tried to understand Nietzsche and tried to see the world in terms of Nietzsche's frame, but he just didn't have the gut. He didn't have the... What did Nietzsche say? The, the, the test of a man's worth is how much truth he can handle. And I don't think that Foucault simply wasn't able to understand the truth which Nietzsche had discovered. I just want to clarify what I mean by Foucault uh, being being convinced more of, being possessed more of a raisonnement will, and Nietzsche being more of a conqueror's will, a master morality. So because Foucault is looking at institutions and he's thinking about the power and he wants to undermine it. Now, contrast that to how Nietzsche would look at institutions of today, and he would say, what these institutions are is degenerate institutions. They have become decadent because there isn't a recognition that the will to power uh, is the source of life energy. We've convinced ourselves uh, that the, the slave morality the will to bring other people down to our level, to take the successful and hate them for being better than us, and to try and bring them down beneath us so that we can feel better. That is what has infected our institutions and made them so worthy of criticism. Nietzsche would never embark on Foucault's project that's purely negative uh, and has no likelihood of actually resolving the decadence of the institutions. Nietzsche would look at these institutions and think, okay, well, the, the presence of these institutions itself isn't a problem, and the fact that they have power isn't itself a problem. It's that they are decadent, and that they're not generating the values which we expect of powerful institutions. Foucault doesn't seem to realize that. He just thinks, oh, well, if we can only, if we can simply get rid of the power of those institutions, then they will stop infecting the world with the terms of their discourses, and then we'll no longer have to be subjected to their discourses, and we can think outside of those institutions thus ridding the world of them, but ultimate of their influence. But ultimately, that is just a slave morality, as far as I can tell. So he thought he was a Nietzschean, but he only took the first step towards Nietzsche. And the first step towards Nietzsche is nihilism. So Foucault, therefore, has the bells and whistles of Nietzsche's critical call for revolution, but he lacks any solid ground to jump from. So what I mean there is that Nietzsche has the will to power to jump from, whereas Foucault doesn't really believe in the will to power, at least in the sense, in the, the rich sense in which Nietzsche understands it. And so he has nothing stable to jump on. So the result of that attitude uh, in Foucault pro produces the result of a series of works which undermine his own culture with no recipe or even appetite for a new one. And I want to clarify that appetite. So Nietzsche didn't tell us how we are exactly to attain the the next stage. I mean, obviously, he gave us the, the notion of a, of a Superman. He didn't give us a step-by-step -step process, but he certainly encouraged us to, to take that leap and to step out upon the precipice. And there's nothing... I think Nietzsche's project, really, less less than describing his philosophical system was to increase the appetite amongst his readers to attain his goal. And the reason that Nietzsche had that goal in the first place was because he had this incredible love for humanity and the brilliance of humanity. But anyhow, Foucault lacked that, lacked that appetite. He lacked the appetite. Uh, and certainly reading him doesn't grant that appetite to anyone. Uh, but Despite the lack of appetite in Foucault, I think it's arguable that he does actually produce a recipe for for new culture, and that is this negative uh, cutting away of the flaws, undermining the power structures, finding anything stable in society and just shaking it up so 
it keeps moving. Uh, and it seems to me that there is a faith in something in the background there. Um, and it may well just be the Hegelian religion of dialectic, dialectical history, uh, which itself, I think, is arguable is a manifestation of resentment slave morality. So Foucault, he doesn't give us a recipe. He starves us of our appetite. And without... Imagine Nietzsche without magnificence. Imagine Nietzsche without vision. All he would have been is a cynic sitting in the mountains trying to ignore his digestion problems and complaining about the collapse of culture, the culture which he's not a part of. And that does seem to be kind of what Foucault ended up being. Now, he wasn't as much of a mountain-dwelling incel as Nietzsche, but he didn't, he didn't have the magnificence of Nietzsche, and he didn't have the vision of Nietzsche. He kind of took the brilliant will-to-power notion of Nietzsche, sanitized it, and made it more amenable, I would say, to a Marxist frame of the world, so that we can understand everything in terms of uh, the economy and society and social structures. In conclusion, I'd simply say that Foucault, he lacks everything that makes Nietzsche valuable and worth reading.